Hello everyone, welcome to another video from the Powerbomb Project. I am one of your three hosts, joined by my other two hosts. Berman. Hey Chris. Today we're going to be talking about AEW Revolution 2023. It's going to be the first pay-per-view for AEW, and it is going to be on the Sunday, March 5th, if I am not mistaken. Yes, it is going to be Sunday, March 5th. So what we're doing today is we're talking about a bunch of matches that we think could possibly go down on that show. So I have the whole card, three matches for a pre-show, more for the total real show. So without further ado, people, let's begin with the one hour pre-show. The first match I got listed here, Jungle Hook versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. I know we all don't love seeing Jeff Jarrett take away uh, time from other people in the company, but I'm not going to lie. Jeff Jarrett hasn't been too offensive in AEW so far, at least in my personal opinion. And honestly, I can't believe I'm saying it. He kind of gave some life to that dead Jay Lethal staple. <laughs> so Jungle Hook, it seems like they're both, you know, two baby faces that are really on the rise. Audiences love both Jungle Boy slash Jack Perry and Hook, so I feel like getting those two over uh, on Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal on the pre-show, why not? That's all I have to say, why not? I'm honestly... Yeah, I think it's a fun match, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just think it's going to be a fun match to watch. I do love the Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, it's very fun. They could have won the championships, but I think the, uh, the acclaim is too hot right now. You think it'll be like a 10 minute squash Berman, or you think it's just going to be like an actual match? I think it's going to be a match. There's going to be a lot of cheating from Jeff Jarrett's side, but I think it's going to be a match in half. And, and hot, take, hot take Daniel? Yeah. Jeff, Jeff Jarrett's great. He great. I don't know about all that. He great. He's the GOAT. He's a wild slap nuts. <laughs> we need him more for the tag team division. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. It needs to be Jungle Hook because this is no. Jeff Jarrett, man. He needs some character no. development. No, quit trolling. What character development? He's been around since the 90s. That's why he needs. we need some character evolution instead of a guitar. Get this. We, okay, in 2023, we do not need to put over Jeff Jarrett in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. But instead of a guitar, he uses a ukulele. Muddy. That he doesn't even play either. Muddy. I don't get his gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So, I will say this. 10 minutes squash. 10 minutes is not a squash. Dude, if anything, this doesn't even need to be 10 minutes. Eh. Jesus. All right. Next match. TBS Championship match. Jade Cargill versus Kira Hogan. This is obviously a storyline that's been building up on AEW television. Kara Hogan's no longer a part of the baddies, and it looks like she could be someone who could take down Jade Cargill. Is she going to get the job done? I say no. I think Jade Cargill is still going to reign for how long at this point? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even thinking about the finish line anymore because it's like, is there even going to be a finish line at this point? Like, I I've genuinely lost all hope in anyone beating Jade Cargill. I'm being dead serious. Like, Jay Cargill beat Thunder Rosa. She beat Nyla Rose. She beat literally almost everyone you could think of. And honestly, mate, I do not have faith in Kira Hogan beating Jay Cargill whatsoever. And why? Because who the fuck is talking about Kira Hogan? Real talk. I'm not even trying to be mean or offensive, but no one really is talking about Kira Hogan out of the entire division. Not that she's a bad wrestler. No, Kira Hogan's perfectly fine. But there are better options, in my opinion, like waiting for Chris Statlander to come back and take that title. Oh, right now, Ruby Soho. That, yeah, you could have Ruby Soho as a baby no, face. Take no, down. I hate Ruby Soho. She's mid. I don't want to see her anywhere near this card. She yeah. had an amazing match on Rampage, a bloody-ass match, so I think she deserves a title because of that freaking bloody-ass match that she had. She deserves a manager role. Because she fucked up when I saw her live. She's mid. 
You didn't. Oh wait, did you, oh yeah, you did see her live. Mid. Nah, that's not true. I feel like maybe her in ring ability isn't the best, but I feel like her whole character and personality and everything is kind of able to, to shine through and carry. Uh, you know, enough to at least get a TBS title ring. Bro, she couldn't so, even carry it in WWE. You didn't even watch her in WWE. No matter. So, all right, guys, you heard his hot take. You don't want Ruby Soho. So, <laughs> I guess moving on to the final match I have listed on the pre-show: AW All Atlantic Championship match, Orange Cassidy versus Kanosuke Takashita, or Takashita, as MJF likes to say. So, this is what I'll say. It doesn't have to be Kinosuke. It could also be the Bandito. It could be Kushida. But I think giving some, giving Orange Cassidy one of those like great, talented international wrestlers, Shuda Umino, someone like that, I think it would be really entertaining to see Orange Cassidy go against someone in that caliber. And honestly, Orange Cassidy, by the time it's revolution, it's going to be March. He won the belt in October, I believe. So that's like five months as champ. He can honestly lose it to someone at Revolution. And if it's Kanosuke, that's actually the person I would have him lose it to. I think Kanosuke has really been a rising star with audiences, and he is really over with people right now. I'd say put the fucking belt on him. Let him defend it in DDT and other companies that he's in. Why not? What, what could be the harm in it? All, the All-Atlantic title is supposed to be the title that can be defended in other companies anyways. And has Orange Cassidy been doing that? Not from what I'm seeing. So, that's no shade to Orange Cassidy. I'm enjoying his title reign, but it's kind of going against what the purpose of the All-Atlantic Championship is, and that's just my personal opinion. I think this could be a great match, though. Maybe even an amazing match. And that's why I think it is possibly going to happen. Who knows? Maybe they'll do some stupid six-man tag with the best friends and all that, but I kind of hope not. Have Orange Cassidy defend his belt on the pre-show in a banger match. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun to watch. I love Kanosuke. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's like the Japanese character. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, I can't wait to see him. If he does, I think it would be great. I would love to see him as champion, too. I think Ori Kashti is enough, is enough as champion. I think he could go for, I think it's NJF right now, if he wanted to. So, right now, I think it would yeah. be a great match to watch. That was a thought I actually had, you know. I was thinking, honestly, you could take the belt off Orange Cassidy and have him fight MJF. Would I have him defeat MJF? No, because I think there are better people who can defeat him than Orange Cassidy. But I would definitely have him be a challenger. You know, I definitely thought of that. Yeah. yeah be cool. But if if he does end up Konosuke winning the title, I'm going to cry. He'll do Cinnamon Bun, a proud service. And besides that, dude, Orange Cassidy Konosuke, we're going to have the in-work chemistry. It's going to be amazing. So if it does happen, I'm all for it, Chief. Yeah, I think even OC versus Bandito would be great too. Yeah. So, now we move on to the main show. So, we have a total of eight matches listed. Less than usual because there's a one hour Iron Man match as the main event. So, without further ado, let's begin with the opener. TNT Championship match. Darby Allen versus Swerve Strickland. Why not Swerve versus Keith Lee? Here's why. I think that shit's being saved. For when? Double or nothing in May. So, here's the thing. Double or nothing means more to AEW than Revolution does. And if you think about it, Revolution last year was kind of used as a pedestal to get to double or nothing. When you had MJF get, you know, lose his match thanks to Wardlow in a way. Not really thanks to Wardlow, but kind of thanks to Wardlow. You know, that set up for them fighting at double or nothing. And it gave us the idea that Punk is probably going after Adam Page since he beat, um, you know, freaking MJF. And then you also have John Moxley and Brian Danielson. You know, William Regal came in. He formed a Blackpool Combat Club that led to an award at Double or Nothing. So I think we should do some long-term storytelling here. Don't throw Keith Lee versus Swerve right out the window for March. Save it till May at Double or Nothing. And Swerve hired these two associates, and he's head honcho right now, I guess you could say. All three of them took out 
Keith Lee with the cinder blocks and Rick Ross was there just repeating the same phrases going like, oh shit, we the best music, kind of like on some DJ Khaled energy, I can't even lie. But outside of that, TNT title Darby Allen versus Swerve, they're both very agile, very fast. They, they're both, uh, you know, kind of risk takers in a way. Darby's more of the risk taker, obviously, and Swerve has more vicious strikes than Darby. But overall, I think the match would be a great matchup. And I think Keith Lee should return in this match because you could have the associates try to cheat for Swerve, but then Keith Lee can take out the associates, leading Swerve to be distracted and pissed off. And that could ultimately lead into a Last Supper or, you know, a stun gun or in a coffin drop, something like that. I think you could have this be a wild ass crazy opener. And I think this is how you make the TNT title stand out. Yeah, I think that's enough said. I think they did a lot, and I think I hope that they do that. It'd be fun to see more. I'm okay if it's worth wins. I'm okay with it, but I think Darby right now is to keep that title and stay out if, to defeat Swarf. Yeah, but the only thing that kind of concerns me is like Swerve's little like group that's happening. I, I forgot what they're called. The the Hustler Academy. Or what are they called? Some shit like that. So, anywho, <laughs> if, as long as they don't get too involved in this match, it should be a banger. I mean, Darby, Swerve, come on. They're both they're both made for this. But again, if his little group of posses of, you know, get involved in whatsoever, it's just kind of be like mid. So hopefully not. We'll, this we'll is see. Honestly, this is how I'd book it. Let the match be a 15-minute match, right? Mm-hmm. 12, 13 minutes in, it's all clean, it's all good. What if the refs accidentally get knocked out? Swerve tries to go for a low blow. Darby sees through it, hits a few moves, and then he hits his coffin drop. But then, the before the, you know, associates try to attack, Keith Lee's music hits. And basically, they get destroyed by Keith Lee. Keith Lee just single-handedly destroys both of them. Swerve gets up, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And then, you know, he turns around and gets fucked up by Darby, finish the match. That's how I would book it. And then you have Swerve be pissed off at Lee and blame him for the loss. Yeah, That's how I would book it. It could work. And the name for their group, for our Swerve's group, is called the, Mo- the Mogul Affiliation. Interesting. I'm not gonna remember that. <laughs> well, it's not. It's a weird name, so I'm not gonna. I probably just remember it mogul. That's all. Yeah. All right. Next match: AEW Trios Championship match: The Elite versus House of Black. And I have a bold prediction here: House of Black taking the titles. And how are they gonna do it? I don't know. Maybe you get Julia Hart involved, or what I think. The heel turn and return from CM Punk, specifically targeting Kenny Omega. And you can have the crowd like boo and throw trash at CM Punk. You know, it, it'd be like that. I, I, I have that vision in my head. People are just so irate and pissed at CM Punk for costing the elite their titles. And, you know, House of Black can take advantage of, you know, that moment and Punk wanting revenge for, you know, the whole brawl out situation back in September. So, yeah, that's where I see that going. Yeah, I think so. If, um, if they win, it's either going to be the same punk thing, or it might be just a black mist, or the black fog, or whatever that he used to do. They might just bring that back and just spray it in one of the, people, in one of the elite's faces to win a match, too. I think it would be a fun match. I think it was going to be a great match. I'm hoping that the House of Black do win. I'm sure they are going to win, seeing that, you know, the Young Bucks recently lost the tire flight, which is wild, so hopefully they kind of dumb them down, because I'm sure Tony Khan's starting to realize you can't rely on Kenny and the Young Bucks forever. You gotta boost new talent, and I got another board prediction for this match, Phyllis. And that's, what would that be? And that's going to be Larry the Dog comes back and super kicks the Young Bucks back <laughs> through a table. Mark my words. I'm putting a you dollar on that. CM Punk and Larry versus the Young Bucks. What's the point of <laughs> no, 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 never mind. CM Punk, Ace Steel, and Larry the Dog versus the Elite. Uh, perfect. No, but for real, it would be CM for FTR versus the Elite. 
that's clearly what I think that that should set up for double or nothing. If Punk returns, and when I and I say if, but I'm going to be honest, I think he will return. I think everything's going to be worked out within these next few months. Punk is near full recovery. I expect a return this spring, and I expect CM Punk not to go after MJF, but to go after the Elite. That's my prediction. Now, let's move on. Match number three. The yearly face of the Revolution ladder match. There's usually six people involved, so here are my six. Wardlow, Powerhouse Hobbs, Luchasaurus, Ricky Starks, Ethan Page, and Sammy Guevara. So, why these wrestlers specifically? I'm going to explain. Wardlow, the winner of last year's match. Powerhouse Hobbs, he's been a rising star in the last year, and it just makes sense. Luchasaurus, kind of the same thing. He's separated from Jungle Boy, and you need to keep him relevant somehow and have him in contention for titles like the TNT title and the All-Atlantic title. And then Ricky Starks, he's an incredibly over baby face at the moment, and he just got a huge win over Chris Jericho, had an AEW title match last month. So I think him getting a chance to be the face of the revolution makes sense. Ethan Page, the guy who's had a grudge with Ricky Starks for a while, so he follows him into this match. Pretty simple. Sammy Guevara, you need that heel that could scare people into thinking, oh, God, this guy might win, but he won't actually win. So, yeah, I think these six are perfectly, uh, you know, good for this match. Who would win out of these six? Personally, the current champ is Darby. I'd kind of throw a curveball. I'd give it to Luchasaurus and do Darby versus Luchasaurus. And would Luchasaurus beat Darby? Maybe not, but I think it'd be a great TNT title match. So that's where I'd go with it. Or you give it to Hobbs, and you do the Darby versus Hobbs. Either way, Luchasaurus and Hobbs are the two in my mind. Good. And I think, to me, this is going to be a fun match, too. And for me, I probably want to pick probably Ricky Starks right now, or... Uh, powerhouse hops too, because I think it'll be fun. But I think more or less Ricky, because I think right now Ricky's best part of, of Dynamite right now, and I think he is pushing it so much against the Appreciation Society. And I think it'd be so much fun to see him as champion, at least, at least for against Darby Allen. I think that'd be a great match to see too. So. Yeah, do, what, do you think it'll be a better ladder match than we got last time with the mysterious Mask Man? Who invades the oh, beach. all out. Yeah. Fuck that match. Yeah, really. I, that match was bad. <laughs> if anyone's going to win, I kind of want to eat them page. Because I want to be pushed. But, but then again, Paros Hobbs has his whole little book series they're working on him. So maybe this is the year he gets pushed. I don't know. Maybe. And another fun fact, Sammy, Ricky, and Ethan all have been rivals of Darby Allen. So it makes sense for all of them to, you know, go after TNT title. True. So now let's move on. Now this next match, this is the only match on the card here that I have that I'm kind of uncertain about happening. But I have it written down anyways because I do think it's possible. Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho. Now Chris Jericho and JS may be busy going after Claudio's ROH title. And, you know, having the mini feud with Action Andretti and Ricky Starks. However, I think with Adam Cole being on this babyface terror that he's in right now, I wouldn't be surprised if Jericho gets a bit jealous of Adam Cole gaining more attention than him at the moment. And why? Because that's a very Chris Jericho thing to do. Yeah, makes sense. And I think that'd be a fun thing to do. I love Adam Cole right now, so I think... It'll be a great match between these two. So it'd be fun if they actually do this. If not, I feel like it's going to be Chris Jericho versus Ricky Starks if that face of revolution doesn't have Ricky. And this is going to be like a extreme rules or something, a stipulation with that match. Or something. And maybe Adam Cole versus someone who, I don't know who's pissed at him right now. So. But it'd be fun to see more. I think that's probably, I'd be happy if, even if I see that Adam Cole versus Chris. Honestly, I I just hope again because with Chris Jericho, I I remember last time like I was so excited for him to fight Daniel Bryan, and that turned out that match was very very mid. So hopefully, if Adam Cole ends up taking him Chris Jericho, which is most likely the case since 
you know, that's a good stepping stone for Adam Cole. They can deliver because that's the biggest concern I have for this kind of match because they're not the most athletic dudes. But, you know, we'll see. Be very well, tactical. No, yeah, that's the main reason I have Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho. I think Jericho putting over Adam Cole and making Cole a contender towards MJF is a likely scenario. Hmm. So, now let's move on. AEW Women's Championship match. Jamie Hayter versus Soraya. Um, this is awkward. AEW turned Soraya and Tony Storm heel the other night. And that was a really fucking stupid call. Now look, I understand Jamie Hayter is over as a face right now. But that doesn't mean you should turn her and Britt face and have Soraya and Tony Storm turn heel. I get it. Y'all are saying up for an AEW Originals versus a versus you know new AEW stars storyline. But guess what? I don't care about that. Everything going on already was perfectly fine. Soraya wanting her redemption and to get back, you know, a title and you know all that stuff that would have been fine enough. And you could have had Jamie Hayter kind of be in the middle of the Brit and Soraya beef. And, you know, you could have had the possibility of Brett turning on Jamie. I just, I don't like this. I don't like this booking decision at all. And I think it's the wrong way to go about it. So it looks like we're getting Jamie as a face versus Soraya as a heel. But I think it should be their way around. I'm not a fan of that at all. But who wins? Clearly Jamie retains. Or maybe not. Maybe they give it to Soraya. Now she's a heel. I don't know. I don't like it, though. I don't like how they're going about it. Yeah, it's super stupid. I don't like it. It's weird why they changed one of the biggest faces, one of the biggest faces, and returns by Soraya and turn her heel. It's just like it's strange. It made no sense. So it's stupid. But probably Jamie Hayter's gonna win because Jamie Hayter is one of the best right now in women's division. Yeah, I don't even get why they turned Tony Storm heel either. Like it was so stupid. Why would you turn? Two of your biggest woman faces in the entire company heel. It's just, uh, I, I'm, fr- I, I'm, I'm not happy about it. I'm not, I'm not happy about it. Chris, uh, what's your opinion on, on this match and recent events? I mean, I don't really understand why they turn heel, but apparently we're in the wrong because like everyone's been praising the shit out of this, out of them. He's like, oh my god, they turn heel. It's such a smart decision, and I'm just like, why? I know. I don't understand. I don't think this does anything good for anyone at all. And I'm like, are you people really seeing Brute Baker become a face? Like, come on. Yeah, that is garbage. Come on. No, I do not want Brute as a face. That is so stupid. Well, you're going to get it. But at least the match is going to be cool. It, it's like taking Triple H from 2004 and turning, turning him face. Like, are you people fucking retarded? Yes. Like, it's like turning Charlotte Flair face. Oh, wait, WWE just did that. Are you guys fucking dumb like them, too? That's yes. all I have to say. But Brett, um, both Brett Baker and Charlotte are faces. I want to throw up in my fucking mouth, bro. Well, you'll get a Jesus good match, Christ. at least. <sighs> Brett better stay the fuck away from the title, man. That's all I have to say. You know she's going to take the title. Dude, she's going to be a worse face than Chris Jericho was in 2021. I am dead serious. No one wants to see that shit besides Britt Baker fans. So, that's all I have to say. Fuck this booking, and if you are justifying it, fuck you too. And click that unsubscribe button. Damn straight. Now we move on to the next match. John Moxley, Adam Page, lights out. Now this is the third and final match. In the trilogy I have going here. They're one to one. They need to sell the score. And why not make it a lights out match? Because they both keep getting knocked out. They both keep getting their lights out. Nah, okay, I was dead. Point being though. Is that I think the score must be settled. Who wins it? I'd have Adam Page win. That's just me. Yeah, I think it deserves to. I think Adam Page does deserve to take that win. And 
it's going to be probably one of the best matches of the night, probably. And it could be fun to watch. So I think Adam Page will win too, probably. I think he should win too, just for the fact that it kind of gives Adam more legitimacy. I mean, I, I know he already was a former champion, but any win over Moxley kind of just established you as one of the top guys too. And you know, he needs it. He's been kind of irrelevant for like a hot minute since he lost the title. But you know, this is going to be definitely the match that boosts him when it does happen, because they're not done. I don't believe for a fact the beach the beef is squashed just yet. Yeah. So. Now we move on to the AEW Tag Team Championship match. The Acclaim versus the Gun Club. But I want to say what I've written down here. I have them fighting in a Scissors Me Timber match. Or Scissor Me Timbers match. And what would the rules of the match be? Let me explain. So basically, there's a giant pair of scissors on the top of the ring. Like, scissors that are as big as Max Caster, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's a ladder match for the scissors. The winner grabs the scissors and they get to use it as a weapon on their opponent. And since the scissors are so big, if they use the scissor, you could literally cut off a leg with the, with, with the scissor. And yeah, that, that's the kind of scissor me Timber match I'd have. Uh, just imagine the, the, just the visual of like the gun club being paralyzed. That shit would go crazy. No, no, okay, for real, let me be honest, let me be honest here. Um, they're probably going to fight in some kind of tag team street fight stipulation, you know, have a fun banger of a match, a claim will retain, hopefully for fuck's sake, unless if they do something that I'm kind of nervous about, and that's, I think Daddy Ass is going to betray the acclaim for his sons and become a heel, and I don't want it, but I think that will happen so they can win the titles. So... That's my prediction. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they're going to do that. A claim is way too hot. If they do that, uh, the ass boy stuff, I think everyone's going to hate it, which is part of the point. But I think a claim is just everyone loves the acclaim right now. And me too. I love him so much. And for the match, I kind of feel like it could be a concrete match. And they, it's kind of hinted maybe, but it's, it's going to be weird how I say this. But pretty much like whoever loses gets the, half their body solidified in concrete. And I think that'd be fun as hell to hear to see. That's probably the first time ever to see that. Honestly, I like it. Yeah. So because they did do that when they put in the hands inside a, a concrete to make a hand. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe they do that. It makes sense. It'd be fun. So I would probably say acclaim is going to win. I think acclaim is way too hard right now. I think the only person who's going to defeat the acclaim will be top flight. Like, here's the thing. If I was booking it, I'd have the acclaim retain. But I'm nervous, man. I'm nervous AEW are going to try to, you know, overthink the situation and try to do a, a heel turn heel. A heel? No, a heel turn here. Like, remember the TNT title feud about, like with Sammy and Scorpio Sky, how there was like a double turn and then a heel turn and then a face turn and then another heel turn? I don't know. I think this is simple. No one's going to turn. The Asperger's think... are not going to turn face. They're going to turn heel. They're going to keep on being heel. And I think no, everyone no. knows that he has. So I don't think they're going to do that. Don't, I think, don't think that Tony Khan is going to be that stupid. I don't think they're going to turn the Acclaim heel. And I don't think they're going to turn the Ass Boys face. I think both those teams are going to stay face and heel. But I think they're going to try to overthink the situation and have a swerve where Billy Gunn turns the Acclaim for his sons. Yeah, I don't know. Everyone loves that he has right now. It, it's, that's, I don't think they're going to do that right now. What do you think, Chris? I don't even know, dude, because if they become, like, I know they're very popular right now, and if even, like, the possibility of Top Flight even coming to that level of popability, people are going to freak out because the claim are just so over. So I don't even know what else they could possibly do. And to, like, you know what throw else them. I just thought about? So. People might boo Top Flight if they beat the Acclaim for those titles, but they'd probably really cheer if they beat the Gun Club for those titles. That's tough. Yeah, that's possible too. Yeah. Because think about it, the acclaimed are going to get cheered over top flight. That's obvious. Mm-hmm. Top flight are not getting cheered over the acclaimed. Let's just be real. So you need like a heel team 
maybe yeah was- exactly you need a heel team for them to beat and that heel team is sadly going to be the ass boys damn because what who else is there who else is there they literally split up every fucking team like morons like yeah, like jurassic Wade. express <laughs> oh my fucking god <laughs> AEW, your division so dead. Cesaro, oh, not Cesaro, Claudio over with uh, Wheelie with Yuta. That's true. Jeez, man. Well, as heels, thank God they they have the right now. I feel like the BCC is being kind of like this heelish people right now with most of the things. Yeah, that are a bit. Just a so, bit. A bit. it would be surprising if they would do. Hmm. We'll see. I think the match would yeah. be like a seven. Or the uh or it could be uh Chris Jericho and uh Sammy Guevara. Oh god no. Oh no. <laughs> Bourbon, no. You know what? Actually, to, 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 do that. To, be fair, to be fair, that would probably be better than the ass boys. Really? Or uh, Sammy Guevara and uh what's the guy's name? Daniel Garcia. And the only other reason why I see the ass boys beating the acclaimed is because think about this whole feud. The acclaimed is won like every single time. They're gonna have to give the gun club something. Maybe they, uh, might, maybe they might surprise you, Daniel. No, yeah. Well, no, that's that. The predictable route that everyone sees is the acclaimed winning, and simple as that. I think they're going to try to surprise everyone by doing that. So, what I'm saying is kind of like a bold prediction. For sure. Now, we move forward to the main event when our Iron Man match. MJF versus Brian Danielson. This is going to be an absolute fantastic match, in my opinion. It at least looks like it's destined to be. Could this be Brian Danielson's night? My answer is no. But I think we'll get a fantastic match out of this. And where do I think Brian's going after this? I think he's going to be more featured on the Ring of Honor side of Tony Khan's businesses than AEW. But that's just my personal prediction. And as for MJF, he'll probably feud with someone heading into a double or nothing, who will that person be? We have no clue. It could be Orange Cassidy. It could be Darby Allen for both the AEW and TNT titles. It could be Adam Cole. It could be Adam Page. There are many options. It could be the returning CM Punk. Who knows, man? Who really knows? But all I do know is that I believe... MJF is retaining this title against Brian Danielson on March 5th. And he's going to prove to the entire world that he can indeed be a main event player inside the ring. Yeah, I think it could be a, good, a great match. I think it'd be fun. I would love to see Brian win, but I feel like Brian will go to Ring of Honor and just go against Claudio with the title. It makes so much more sense. But I think it'd be a Great match, and I will predict this completely. Who's going to get the first point in the Iron Man match? And that's going to be Danny Bryan, but by disqualification. I feel like what's going to happen is MGF is either going to hit Ryan, Ryan with either the Diamond Diamond Ring, Brass Knuckles, or Chair to get an advantage. Then Brian gets a point, but then MGF gets one more point, gets another point. So he gets weakened. It makes more. It makes a lot of sense for how MJF likes to winning these types of matchups, or these type of matches by cheating ways. So I think this is that's going to happen. Brian, Kate, Brian will get the first point by disqualification. I can see it. Do you think it's going to last a like full hour, or do you think it's going to like? Well, actually, let me re- rephrase well, that. The it whole has to be last good. a whole hour. Is the whole match going to be a slow burner? Because what I don't want is that Moxley match thing from all over, where it's just MJF. What, what Moxley match? Where MJF uh, won, but barely. Like, I don't want to see all MJF right. get his ass kicked for like an hour. I'm not going to be ass. too harsh. I'm not going to be too harsh to John Moxley here. Okay. Okay. I don't think someone like him is going to have as good chemistry as someone like a Brian Danielson would. Because think about how good his CM Punk matches were compared to John Moxley's. True. I think it's going to be more of a CM Punk case. I doubt it's going to be the John Moxley case. I'm hoping, man. I'm really hoping. And no offense, you guys already know I believe Punk is a better wrestler than Moxley. And I think Brian's a better wrestler than both. So I think Brian will have probably an even better match with MJF than either of them did. And that's saying quite a bit for Punk's case. 
Yeah, I think it makes sense. So, again, I, I love all three of those pe- people, though, but th- that's the facts about MJF. We just have to be objective and admit that MJF is, you know, more of an old-school style wrestler, and he's only going to blend with certain types of people. True. So, I can see it. Yeah, MJF retains. So, that's what I'm saying. So, if my predictions are true, we would have new tag team champions, and we would have new trios champions, a new All-Atlantic champion, and then if Berman's predictions were true, he would have you would have a new all, all Atlantic champion. You would have new trios champions. And yeah. Then Chris basically the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, that's all our card predictions, guys. If this show ends up coming to full fruition, I think this would be a banger show. And that's all I have to say. I expect an eight out of ten pay per view. Yeah, I feel like eight eight and a half. I'm hoping an eight, but we'll see, man. Yep. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Daniel. I've been Berman. I've been Chris. Take it easy, people. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if your takes aren't sheet. No, I'm just playing.